UStreamRadio.com. Pick up your copy of Diamond K's book, You Are Not the Father. Have you read it yet? Head to Amazon.com, review it, rate it, buy it now. Amazon.com, You Are Not the Father. Available on digital, paperback, and audio versions. It's UStreamRadio.com, your urban news and entertainment source. I'm your man, Diamond K. This is also the home of the Head Rush Radio Show, 6.30 p.m., 5.30 central, here on UStreamRadio.com. Thank you for logging on. Thank you for tuning in. Yours truly, Diamond K. It's the Diamond K Show. Definitely check me out on Instagram and Twitter at the Diamond K Show. Also daily on UStreamRadio.com. Now, with that being said, let's get into today's topic. What's going on? It's your boy Jay Jackson. Hey, we're going to go right into it. I got my man Diamond K in the building. All right. No fluff. Right. Straight squeeze. Let's get right into it. Now, how did the whole Ustream Radio movement start? How did that start? Well, um, the, the thing about Ustream Radio itself, uh, a lot, I guess a lot of people get it twisted. Um, initially, I guess I got to go back to the to the beginning. I've been doing the Diamond K show for many years. Okay. Uh, since uh, 2005. Okay. So I've been doing the Diamond K show since 2005 um, on the internet, various uh, different websites. Uh, but um, so that's that's the, the real origins of Ustream Radio starts from the Diamond K show. Um, so for since, like I said, 2005, I was doing shows on Blog Talk um, and on YouTube and other and other places. Uh, newspapers have done articles about that, and uh, that's well documented. Over the years, as we built things up. I did different different types of partnerships with other people, and um, in 2011, uh, we took the Diamond K show to WPBRadio.com. Yes. Uh, and while I was there, we introduced a lot of different characters and our personalities, um, and eventually we left WPB Radio uh, and we decided to start UStream Radio. Uh, because you know we wanted to do some of the more um, rap oriented things and, and a lot of different things that we didn't have the uh, ability to do uh, at WPB radio so that is how and why Ustream radio started okay okay so so let me straight a lot a reason why the Ustream radio movement was started because a, a vehicle was needed in that particular area in other areas to be able to play other various of music and do it in other directions. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we definitely wanted to have, um, you know, there was like independent artists that really needed to get some shine. Okay. And um, at at WPB Radio, we were unable to to do that. We could we could take it, but so far, and then they would pull us back. You know, what I mean, uh, it's too you know, it's too much rap, or it's too much this, or too much that, uh, and it became frustrating. So. Um, on the on the show, I was uh, Poppy the Body was on the show with us, um, Sweet T and uh, Mainism. Uh, Unique was on the show as well. Uh, so through so through the what happened is initially it was just me, mm-hmm. just me doing the show, um, and Sweet T. As time passed, um, Unique came on. Eventually, uh, Poppy the Body became a guest, and then she was added to the show. Uh, Mainism, who I've known um, since you know the early '90s, he came on the show as well. Um, so everyone had input into the show. Main would like to bring some some rap guests, um, and what happened is that we would get resistance from WPB Radio about the hip hop guests gotcha. at at a certain point. So what we started to do was we started to do some interviews. That weren't on WPB Radio, but we did them at WPB Radio Studio. So we started doing interviews of the artists that you know May wanted to bring through, or uh, but we weren't able to get on WPB Radio. So then we started doing these interviews, and um, that that's really the basis for the one-on-one show. 
Got you. Now, I wanted to go right into it because you touched right where I wanted to go at. Now, I know you had other shows, Puppy the Body. We had Sweet Tea. Shouts out to all of the people out there, Houston yep. Radio fam. Now, the Mainism show, creating that vehicle. How was that whole, just to clear up the air, how was the 101 Mainism show created and why? Um. Well, like I said, the the, the early... The earliest one on one mainism, like I said, uh, you don't have to take my word for it. All this stuff is is, is on um, on our YouTube channel. But mainism's early shows, while we were still at WPB Radio, I, d- I decided to do a spin off segment. I wanted to spin off everybody from the Diamond K show. Um, I wanted to spin everyone off, Puppy the Body and Sweet Tea, to their own show. Mainism to his own show, and get the Diamond K show back to just being Diamond K. Mm-hmm. That's that's what my goal was, and that's what what happened. Uh, but as as it relates to Mainism and one on one with Mainism, um, I thought that Mainism's strong point and and his enjoyment is in the independent artist of Baltimore. So we decided to let him do an interview segment with with those you know whatever artists. Um, so we decided to call the show one on one with Mainism. Um, that was. The show name is is my idea, um, Diamond K, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> put that out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Initially, my first thought though was to call it "In the Streets with Mainism." Okay. Um, but what what happened is that um, Main Main said, "Ah, oh, well, I want to do, um, you know, I want to talk to maybe some other types of people, and maybe it won't only be rappers or people in the streets." And so uh, he didn't want a title like that. So uh, we went back to the initial title which we were using, which was called One on One with Mainism, uh, because initially it was just Mainism and one artist mm-hmm. face to face talking. Mm-hmm. So that's where the whole One on One with Mainism uh, came about. Uh, after we left WPB Radio, um, you know, we, you know, um, you and I formed Ustream Radio, uh, which is just an extension of what we were already doing. Um, we already had uh, a successful website and Ustream Radio was just incorporated into that. Uh, so Mainism's first show uh, was in April um, of uh, 2012. So with that, we started to build the, the brand. Now, um, initially the shows were just me and Mainism going to a location. And uh, we, started the, we started the series just trying to get people to know who Mainism was we went to his old neighborhood talking to some people in his old neighborhood and things like that uh, and then as it went on we started to, to interview artists more um, and then it, it slowly became what uh, what it what it is now got you now you know it's been a lot of uh, as I would say crazy talk out there in the streets, different people. Well, I don't know who who says that. Uh, who says it's crazy to talk in the streets? Uh, the people, the people out there, a lot of uh, social via social media. Okay, oh, well, that social media is not the streets, but no, yeah, I got, that, you. I got like, you. You know, and they got them out there. Even the, even the dope boys, all of them is online in the streets. But let's just say, different people out there um, talking. Even you know, mainism. Let's clear this up. What what's going on between the whole one on one? What what's the status of one on one mainism? Yes. Um. I, I have heard uh, Maine say in, in interviews, and I've heard I've never publicly addressed this. So, so Jay Jackson has the exclusive. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let get, let's just get it. Let let's clear the air. Um, okay, I am the type of person who uh, I give people opportunities, and I'm not necessarily a person who always talks about. I gave this person this opportunity. I gave this person that opportunity. But uh, as it as it stands, the truth is the truth. I've given a lot of people opportunities to do things in the city of Baltimore. Um, and usually these are people that I've had some type of a friendship with over the years. And I see a strong point in them and how we can, you know, get some things going. Um, so with Mainism, like I said, Mainism, our background is in I met Maine in a record store uh, that we both worked at. Uh, in the 90s in Westview Mall. Okay. So I was doing club music, managing artists, giving people opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And Maine was was a, you know was a DJ there, and we became friends because we worked together every day. Uh, so I knew that Maine's strong point, of course, is hip hop. If I'm doing some club music, Maine is not the person I would go to. 
Uh, so his strong point is in hip hop. His love is in hip hop. Um, uh, an underground type of hip hop. He's not a down south fan. He's not a West Coast rap fan. He's a you know uh, underground Baltimore rap fan. Okay. So what the one on one with Mainism was a vehicle uh, to promote Ustream Radio and to promote Mainism. Um, I produced the show mm-hmm. and um, I filmed and edited the show. Uh, wh- initially, what I wanted to do was a weekly show. Got you. That is a serious commitment. Okay, because a lot of people would just say, you know, they see something filmed and say, oh, why is it not up? But put my show up. Mm-hmm. Those are people that don't know how to film or edit that say that because it is a tedious process. It's a very tedious process, meaning it takes a long time to get that shit done. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you have a regular life, if you have a regular job, if you have other things that are going on, you have to fill it, you know, get all that to fit in. Now, what happens is that over time, we started we started the one-on-one series. Mm-hmm. People, I'm going to say maybe they paid attention, maybe they didn't. It took time. After we started consistently doing shows, consistently doing shows and putting out... Uh, content people start paying attention naturally people started to copy we saw other little interview shows started popping up and I remember me and Ming talking about it you know this one's doing a show this one's doing a show he, he would have certain feelings about it but I told him that nobody is going to maintain the level of consistency meaning nobody's going to do as many shows as we're going to do I said they're going to fade off and he did they faded off and uh, we continue to do shows, um, numerous shows. Now, it was difficult to maintain a once a week um, schedule for several reasons. Because one, the artist that we're interviewing, because he really wanted to interview Baltimore artists and Baltimore hip hop artists. There's only but so many. So if you have 365 days in a year, 52 weeks in a month, yeah. we would have run through all of the artists. <laughs> you know, uh, pretty quickly. I, and there's a, there's a lot of artists in Baltimore. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we would have run through all the artists. So we had to slow things up a bit. Uh, some shows I broke off into two segments, you know, because keeping a person's attention span on the Internet is difficult. So you don't want to make shows too long. Um, there's a lot of things. And also, Maine doesn't do what I call a traditional interview. Gotcha. He doesn't do a, uh, so where were you born? How did you get started in music? You know what I mean? It, it's a different type of an interview, and it's not for everybody. Gotcha. Uh, but, so Maine's show had to be produced a certain type of a way, you know? Um, and I know Maine, so I know how to produce Maine. Uh, do we argue during shows? Definitely. Uh, but that's good because we both come in from a different standpoint, a, bo- a different way of looking at it. And so um, me coming from one way, him coming from one way, we bump heads on some things, but we came out with a very good product. Um, and it got to a point where Mains wanted to do more shows. And sometimes he would want to do three and four in a day, uh, which was wow. too much of a schedule for me. Yeah, wow. <laughs> because, because my thing is, is that I have other... Uh, projects that I'm working on. So my only project in life was not how can I pump up Mainism. Gotcha. Unfortunately, I have other things to do as well. So I still had a Diamond K, Diamond K brand. I still have uh, a very, um, a very storied past in club music. I still have other shows I'm producing. I still have um, independent movies in various stages that I'm working on. Um, the Baltimore Music Awards, which we haven't talked about yet, and a lot of other different things. And so, Maine uh, started to get restless and frustrated that I was not putting up things at the capacity that he wanted them up. Gotcha. So he would say something like, "You know, bring some other people on, or do this, or do that." And I am very careful who I bring in my circle. As everyone should. Gotcha. Everyone's not going to share the same commitment level, the same, um, you know, the same goal that you, and you have to be careful who you bring. And other times people are going to want to get paid. Absolutely. Who's going to pay somebody to do all this? I said, Maine, nobody is going to shoot as much as we shoot. So it's kind of sort of like a uh, just chill, you know what I mean? Maine uh, statue and uh, status um, and presence and popularity in the city of Baltimore increased through the shows, naturally. Definitely. Um, And that's a good thing. And I wanted that to happen. Uh, I promoted Maine as the show in the show title. It's one-on-one with Mainism. Mm -hmm. 
so that was something that was consciously done now over time um, I said if you want to shoot more then you get somebody else to shoot as well then that's fine but nobody's going to shoot as much as we shoot definitely I shot a lot of main yes. shows yes. Uh, and he's done shows with other people but they haven't sh- either they haven't A shot as much as I shot um, or, or B put up as much shows as I have put up and C and I'm going to say this and this is no disrespect to anybody um, because I've, I've seen all the shows no one has the level of um, compatibility with Maine than I do because I know him mm-hmm. and I am a producer and a director first and foremost Definitely. so um, none of the other shows have the same type of uh, it. Does, they don't flow the same way than the shows that I shot with Maine and you know I wanted to touch on that as far as the vehicle, like you brought up earlier, the vehicle of the mainism shows and other shows, do you feel, because after the show, um, been picked up uh, on Transition, you know, Transition Radio, other vehicles, um, do you do you have a problem with that show being transferred, uh, that template? Transitioned? Trans- <laughs> yeah, transitioned. Um, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't have a problem. Let me tell you why. Because, um, well, I guess let me, let, let me say this. After a certain period of time, um, Maine and I, we never communicated every day. You know what I mean? Even when we worked together, we talked at work. We didn't talk outside of work because we're into different things. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Um, you know what I mean? We're into different things. So, so outside of working, we're not into the same stuff. I don't play video games. Okay. So these are things that Maine's into. I'm not into. Okay. So it's not like we talked every day. We talked about the show, whether we were going to film, whether we weren't going to film. That's what our conversations were always. If we're not filming, we didn't really talk. We didn't really talk. I'm, I don't play Grand Theft Auto. Back when I had a son, he played Grand Theft Auto, but I don't play Grand Theft Auto. Okay, so let me say that. Um, and the book is on Amazon right now. But um, so, uh, uh, but 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 in, but in all seriousness, um, I've heard him speak about this, so I, I will say this um, on on a, on a serious note: if you put in time, energy promoting someone, you feel as though you are owed certain things, as in respect, as in you know, not to somebody to talk sideways about them in social media, and I feel as though these things happen. Um, so it did make me pull back a little bit. Um, I feel as though, uh, that's how I feel. And I've dealt with that with other people before. So I've handled it a little differently now. Um, I saw, I would see things and, and, and this is the thing the, the, the city is of uh, Baltimore is small. Yeah. We all know the same people, you know, and also, I, and I also want to address something that Maine said that people in the streets, people in the streets said, fuck down. Right? Yeah, I heard that's that. Fine. That's, and some <laughs> people in the streets have said fuck Don. But let me say this. The people that he's relating to, the same people in the streets that said fuck Diamond is also saying Maine is disloyal and Maine's a click jumper. Yeah, so we can't put that. too much into what the people say. You know, because because oh, and these are the same people. Let's keep in mind the same people that Maine knows in music, I know in music too. You know what I mean? Uh, but I don't hang and smoke and drink with them because I'm not into that. But but let me say this. So uh, as time passed, um, there definitely was tension as we filmed. But the tension was because Maine wanted to film more and he wanted the things to come out quicker. The thing about Maine's show is that we film a lot and everything... Oh, I guess we we film enough with you know half an hour to forty five minutes worth of stuff. Uh, as it relates to video, that's a lot, and that's heavy, and you have to go through a lot of stuff. So it's easier to put up some other types of shows sometimes than it is main show because I developed a whole blueprint for main show that other people have copied, mm-hmm. um, and that's fine. But other people have copied it and 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 do that. So it is labor intensive to pull the footage to pull video footage to to slap the video footage in to all that takes time uh to do and so uh, i think if may i think me and Maine would understand each other better if Maine edited yeah. if he edited then it would be like oh now i see you know because it takes time but he still may not because he would only be working on his show 
and I work on a lot of different shows. Uh, so that so that's what that is. Um, the last the last show that I filmed with Maine was the Maniac Dre, the part two of the Maniac Dre show. Yeah, and I wanted to get into that because the last interview I heard, and, and I got to say this, um, Maine did keep it political. He did try to, you know, he basically was saying that. Uh, he just didn't know what happened. When you said when you said main cap it political, you mean main cap it political on the hard body uh, show well, rep, rep fam rep that he interview that he did. Fam. Okay. Um, yeah, he kept it political when I heard that interview on hard body, and his whole thing was he just didn't know what happened. He, he just saying that hey, I wasn't getting my tapings the last show uh, with the Maniac Dre show. Um, after that show didn't come out, I didn't talk to Diamond. I didn't get any phone calls or anything like that. And I just was out in the dark. Uh, you care to address that whole thing, to clear that whole thing up? Um, I think that's a fair statement. Okay. From his position, that's how he feels. And I understand that. And that's true. We didn't talk. And, and he said that usually radio sponsors some parties. And uh, he, I guess he wanted to come there to talk. Um, and uh, he didn't see me there. And that's fine. Uh, but let, let, let me say this. I wasn't not there because Maine was going to be there. Okay, I was filming a movie and uh, and things ran over. Uh, but just because we're sponsoring a party doesn't mean that I have to be there. Uh, that just means that I help promote the party. Um, and uh, so, but but let me say this: uh, that's true. We did not talk. He said I took you know a long time to answer his text. Maine's texts to me were: When's the show coming up? Can we film something? Maine's texts is always about what can you do for Maineism. Um, I honestly don't feel that Maine um, supported the Ustream Radio brand as much as Ustream Radio supported him. So after a period of time, I did. Um, uh, we didn't talk as much. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, and what really happened is after he started filming with other people, I pulled back okay. because um, I felt that he was filming with other people and his show would be fine. Mm-hmm. Um I didn't have a problem with it. I started to focus more on my other projects. I started to see and hear things, crazy talk, um, speaking negative about um, the how how often his shows came up, and different outside ventures like the Baltimore Music Awards. I didn't necessarily appreciate some of those things. So could I have called him and said, "Yo, this, this, and this"? Probably. Did I? No, because it was no point. You know what I mean? It's no point. Um, as time went, after we filmed the Maniac Dre show, uh, the, 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 um, the part two of the Maniac Dre, uh, which is available now, you can check that out. Um, uh, yeah, we didn't, we, we didn't film anything else after that. There was never a formal conversation. We didn't have a, an argument or anything like that. Uh, it was never a fallout, but there was never a call placed by either one of us. Uh, so I say that we both would be 50% responsible for the fact that we didn't talk, um, as far as moving to Atlanta without saying anything, um, Maine knows where I live mm-hmm. uh, when I lived in Baltimore, and Maine knows my phone number. Mm-hmm. Um, so if if he was you know concerned about the conversation, or having a conversation, he could have. He didn't because I felt like there was another opportunity at you know at Transition Kings um, or whoever. I mean, you know, we built up the the uh, the one on one brand. So everybody wants to attach themselves to it because we took time to build it up. Absolutely. Uh, so no one else built up a brand like that, and um, no one else knows how to to do that the way that I did. Uh, because, like I said, Maine has to be produced a certain way. Got you. Now, um, just to touch on that, just to clear everything up, this Maine isn't talk. Um, what you're saying, as far as it going to different outlets and stuff, you never held Maine back. No, 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 no. I encouraged Maine to find someone else to film if he wanted to film more than what I wanted to film. But even though Maine has had two or three other people film um, episodes of his show other than me, mm-hmm. no one, all of the other three combined have filmed more episodes than me. Mm-hmm. So I said all that to say is that I told you that nobody else was going to film more than me. And he went to three different people to film other episodes, and no one else filmed more than me. 
And now that he's at Transition Kings, I'm not holding it back. I'm not saying I'm. I'm not saying um. I I I thought of one on one with Mainism, and now I'm gonna have one on one with Diamond K or one on one with this one or somebody here. No, not at all. By all means, take it as far as you think you can take it. Um, you know what I mean. So it's like, but it's because we built it up that anybody even sees something in it. Um, so you know. I mean that's that's how I feel about that. I I, I definitely wish him well. Um, should we have had a conversation? Probably. Uh, but um, a lot of things. I mean, and I, I feel as though there was subliminals taken at me um, by way of social media as well. Okay. Well, you know, and the thing is, like I was saying, shouts out there to Mainism. Uh, of course, we're going to continue to promote you as well as Transition Kings, and I'm glad, Diamond, you're able to say about this vehicle. I think that a lot of people is missing the whole point of the one-on-one mainism show that this is a vehicle for other artists, any artist, whether it's mainism or anybody out there in this position to be able to be heard. And at the end of the day, that's all she matters. All the shit matters if you are you have a love for the hip hop, a love for the music business, let's say that. And you want to be able to create a lane for artists to come out. It doesn't matter who's putting the show out or who's the vehicle as long as the vehicle is there and an the opportunity for that so uh, I gotta say shouts out there to you as well as Maine check out the shows on Ustream Radio on demand some of his earlier shows as well as Transition Kings Radio uh, and shouts out there to the uh, Maineism and we wish you well and we will continue to promote those shows out there now let's get into it we chopped it up we cleared up this Maineism stuff so that way nobody we can kill all these rumors let's kill them still work on the vehicle let's go into the bmas there's a lot of different talks that's coming up november the 9th how was this outlet created the bmas um the bmas came about because uh i was watching the bet awards one year uh, on 2011 and i said baltimore needs something like this and um that's pretty much how it happened. Uh, I mean, I had that thought. I said, Baltimore needs something like this. I, and, and I thought it was crazy. Uh, I pitched the idea to you. And uh, and then we decided to put it in motion. Um, and and we did that. Now, uh, as it relates to the BMAs, the, the point of the BMAs is just to recognize um, some, ta- some independent talent from Baltimore. Uh, and uh, that was the purpose of it. Um, when... When the BMAs, when we started the nomination process of the BMAs, which I'll go into in a minute, but when we started the nomination process of the BMAs, I got a phone call from um, the, uh, I got a phone call from someone from, from the Crown Awards. Okay. And, um, and she said, you know, how could you create an award show? You know me. And I know her. Okay. I know her. Um, I know Shin. Shin, yeah. And so she called me, and you know why? You know why would you create um, an award show? Why wouldn't you um, help? You could have helped with the Crown Awards, and in, instead of making a show to compete with the Crown Awards, mm-hmm. right? And like I said, I know her. I, I, I uh, we at the flea market, we had a stand, uh, like one or two stands over from each other. I saw her for every Saturday and Sunday for many years. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I never thought to do that because the BMAs, I wanted to do a little different than what they did. And I thought that it would be better for the entertainment scene to have more than one show Variety. than to have one show. Exactly. Because you have more opportunities to recognize artists. And we also wanted to highlight different things. I thought it was a good idea. Absolutely. Uh, I did take offense to the call and the tone of the call. Uh, because it was kind of like a, you know, we did this, you know, we've already done, uh, they had already done a few shows. I don't remember how many, maybe three, maybe five. I don't, I don't remember the exact number. Maybe, maybe it's, I don't remember the exact number, but they had, they had done several, uh, before that. And I was aware of it and she was mad because I was aware of it and didn't, um, you know, I voted in the past for, in the crown awards. Uh, but so, you know, I was trying to explain to her, and like I said, we did, we haven't spoken since that day. Um, but, um, you know, we, uh, she said that she felt is that that was what's wrong with Baltimore, you know, and um, 
the thing about it is, is that the Crown Awards, uh, which I support, I've gone to several Crown Awards, mm-hmm. and uh, even though I probably could have done some type of a media thing or gotten in all my credentials, I paid money to go into the Crown Awards on more than one occasion. Uh, just because, even after that conversation, just because I support independent music, yes. um, and uh, so the thing about it is that the Crown Awards and the Baltimore Music Awards are completely different. Uh, the way that we do the nomination process is different. What we highlight is di- who we highlight is different, and who we're trying to appeal to is different. Uh, so I never looked at them as competition. I looked at them as you know the MTV Awards and the VH or BET Awards, or just you know the Grammys and the American Music Awards. I mean, I, I look at it simply like that. Um, and I and I wanted to ask you about it because a lot of people out there uh, that's actually participating or heard of the VMAs and the Crown Awards or any other other outlets that's out there, uh, trying to com- compete or compare the two, and tell them a little bit about the different process uh, with it and why why they should not be compared or I mean that they're different. Well, outlets. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they should be compared because. Um, one day, I mean, they're, they're totally different. The, the way that they, the way that they go about it, is different than us. Um, and I think that they focus more of an underground type of thing, which which you need. And, and we do a, a little bit, a little bit different. What we highlight, we don't highlight like freestyle artists and graffiti artists and photographers and things like that. And the Crown Awards do. Um, their voting process is like a, a like a one vote ballot, and you have to nominate someone and then explain and. and detail why you're picking them uh and the bmas um is an online process and it strictly goes on uh the amount of votes people's choice people's choice so so we're different in, in that regard um and uh you know so i mean we're different in that regard um so just to clear the air uh Ustream radio with bmas or any of the outlets out there radio media anything that's bringing opportunity we're not trying to be biased we're basically just trying to create outlets for the artists out there to be able to be heard and right we, we encourage the people out there to be able to come together to do that and stop fighting each other right well yeah i mean i i never i, I never uh went back and forth um and I, you know, you see, I see things, and I see people say things. Um, I usually don't jump in when people say things, uh, because the purpose of the BMAs is to help independent artists. Okay, um, it's we put up the money for it. For it. So, so let let me let me let that that show. It's not a you know we're not we're not making any money off this. You know, so it, it's I do take a you know something that Kia Sample said um, online. Shout out to Kia Sample. Um, you know, it, it was something that Kia said about it not being appreciated, uh, and something like that. And it, I didn't really think about it like that until I saw her say that. Uh, I do feel as though the effort is not necessarily appreciated. Um, but it, it come by some of the people, but I, I it's kind of hard because then I'll say sometimes some people that speak negatively are artists who may have not been. Um, who, who the voting or nominations didn't go their way, and then they speak negatively about it. Uh, but if the nominations had gone another way, then they would have sp- spoken a different way. I mean, because who honestly does not want to be recognized? I, I've seen yes. different people say, I saw Manism say, I don't want to be recognized. Uh, and then he said that he, he didn't want to be in the category because he didn't think he could win. Because he said the other, uh, the other nominees had more Facebook friends than him. The you can't win based on the Facebook <laughs> friends. Uh, uh, it's it, it's about the total recognition of the artist. I mean, Mainism shows have had thousands and thousands of views. Thousands and thousands of people have seen Mainism show. Okay, and, and let me say these are real views. These are not souped up views or bought views because I would not buy any views. Let me tell you that. Okay, so these are these are are real views. Um. So, and I can speak for forever about fake views that 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 people have. That's a whole nother. That's show. a whole nother show for a whole nother day. Uh, but I, I do want to take the time to say this: your Facebook friends do not determine the winner. Okay, that's ridiculous. Uh, as I said, the, the people that are in the category that Maine is in, uh, which is the radio station internet show category, 
uh, WPB Radio, Hard Body Radio, um, uh, Freaky Felony, and um, Mainism. All of all uh, Freaky Felony shows have had thousands and thousands of views. So that he's in the category because he's known and has thousands and thousands of views, and people nominate him. Mainism, same thing, thousands and thousands of views. He has many more views. On, on his Ustream Radio uh, show, produced and created show, mm-hmm. um, then he has Facebook friends. That's true. Yeah. But this is not about his Facebook friends. WPB Radio and Hard Body Radio have had thousands and thousands of people listen to their shows. That is why they're in the category, not because of Facebook friends. So let me let me just, you know, eliminate that. Just to clear that up and everything. Um, and also, just to let y'all know, make sure y'all support all of the outlets out there. You know, we... We gotta work together. We gotta kill all this. I'm the best, all this and that. Just let's have the outlets for the people and let's just work, you know, the people that's in those particular businesses. Now let's not be the dead horse. Yeah, I wanna be the I don't wanna be be the dead horse, but I do wanna say this. I, I wanna say that different things that are innovated. Now, there's a difference between the BMAs and the Crown Awards and someone sh- just completely copying a blueprint okay. now I do, want, I do want to say that i do want to say people be original you know if you see something that inspires you do something else don't try to redress the same thing and call it something else let me say that absolutely and, and this is let's let's say this I don't want nobody get offended. I, I, I just want to leave it at that. I don't I want to say anything else. I just want to leave it at that. I don't want to say anything else. I don't want to say anything else. I want to leave it at that. I just want to leave it at that. Now, the the goal of Ustream Radio is um, always to be an outlet for people uh, to be heard and, and seen. Uh, but also, we make movies, reality shows. And uh, that is why we moved to Atlanta. Uh, but when we say move to Atlanta, uh, the whole operation has moved to Atlanta. That is true. Uh, the BMAs will still continue. Um, we have correspondents in Baltimore and and planes that fly to Baltimore. So uh, the BMAs will still continue. Uh, we are down here because we have several reality shows that are going to be taking place uh, and other um, movie and cable um, opportunities. So that's that's why we're here. It's better here in case people didn't know. Um, there are no cable stations or reality uh, shows uh, headquartered in Baltimore. No. So um, <laughs> that's why we're here. Okay. Um, but go ahead. Yeah. You know, and like you just said, a lot of the uh, networks or. Uh, yeah, a lot of networks or any other media companies just not staged in one place that broadcast worldwide. Absolutely. And uh, we got to get We have out to of think big, mindset. people. We have to think big. Um, you know, BET, MTV, they're headquartered wherever they're headquartered. Uh, but VH1 is headquartered where they're headquartered, but they do shows all over the country. Absolutely. Uh, and so a lot of times we have to think big, people. Think big. Think big. Now, let me say this. Let's say this. What, what do you see the next chapter? The next chapter uh, of Ustream Radio? Well, um, all of the shows that Ustream Radio has done um, will always be available to be viewed on Ustream Radio um, on demand. The reoccurring shows, always, including Mainism Show. Any show that we've done uh, with anyone will always be available. Um, as we go forward, uh, people are going to see us transition. Um, even more did i say transition i didn't want to use that word uh but uh people are going to um people are going to see us evolve even more uh, as i said into film television um and but we're still going to continue to do interview shows and and play music as well definitely definitely the uh, outlet is still open uh out there so don't think that oh man he pulled out of this area still open uh, don't worry about it you stream radio it's for you just want to have to go to different places to make those opportunities available not you for everyone for everyone right. <laughs> not you everyone everyone hey we appreciate you tuning in uh make sure you go to uh ustreamradio.com to check out any of our on-demand shows that we have out there available uh, for any music or opportunities, you can go to Ustream Radio MP3 at gmail.com and just hit us up. Follow us on Twitter, 
Ustream Radio 1. Hey, it was a pleasure and all the time sitting here chopping up with your boy Jay Jackson. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. No problem at all. Make sure you keep it locked. Ustream Radio. Peace. With that, let me close it out. Uh, check me out online. Tweet me at the Diamond K Show on Instagram at the Diamond K Show. Uh, definitely hit the subscribe button uh, above this video. If you are watching us on YouTube or listening to us on YouTube, or go to ustreamradio.com, there is a big subscribe button at the top. Hit that so you can check us out everywhere. Uh, thank you for logging on and tuning in. I will see you next time. Ustreamradio.com.